Welcome to our first private forum. I'm Mark Smith, the chair of the Business Advocacy <coughs> for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our presentation today. If we could start out with a word of thanks to our sponsor, Prevea. Thank you for your <laughs> And thank you, too, for our venue, the Elks Club, for doing another fine job today. Our presentation today is going to be about some of the future developments that are coming in our area. And we'll have a couple of speakers for you with a nice presentation. But I'd also like to point out that we have at least three members of our community that are here today as part of the audience who have special interest in development in Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. You might want to speak after the program with Mayor Mike Anderstein. from the Sheboygan County and Adam Payne of course our County Commissioner so, thank you for being here this is a, a, a very nice crowd and it should be a very interesting presentation I'd also like to point out the business advocacy committee members if you would please raise your hands and after the presentation today please come up to any one of us and provide us your comments complaints concerns questions especially suggestions for future programs that you would like to hear about we would love to hear your ideas so with that i'd like to introduce today dave hoffman he's the manager of sheboygan squared dave please Thank you, Mark, and thank you all for being here today. I'm glad you could take some time out uh, to stop in here on your way over to South High to feel the burn, so we appreciate you coming by. <laughs> also, thank you to Betsy and everybody at the Chamber, my home away from home. Uh, spent a lot of time there, and it's, it's been a great experience. Um, when Jane talked to me a while back about doing the Friday Forum, she said, so what's going on downtown? We hear all this stuff, and we're not really sure what's happening, you know, it comes out in the paper, but do you have anything new, something that people don't know yet? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, I think we can handle that. So, we, it's been a lot of work, a lot of effort put in on this, and especially on, on the part of uh, the city and the development departments. So, um, it's not often that, that we're able to look at a project and say, something that's really going to be transformational to our downtown and our waterfront and and yet uh, still keeping a, an icon a sheboygan icon building intact uh, but we're able to do that and right now i'd like to call up the director of city development chad pelashek he's going to really get the ball rolling i'm not one for podium so uh, thank you, Dave, and thank you to the Chamber. What we wanted to do is start out this presentation and follow up on this project that we worked really hard to get to. Um, we're looking, we're selling the building for a dollar, and everybody says, why do we always sell these buildings for $10 and the land for $20 and $1? Well, we're selling the building for a dollar. It's a national uh, monument, and <clears throat> we're going to be using $5 million of your tax dollars towards incentivizing uh, this company, which we've heard loud and clear that people have said over the years they want this company in um, this in this market, and we hear it and read about it in the newspaper. So we are proud to announce that the Olive Garden is heading to the Municipal Armory. <laughs> we thought since it was April Fool's, we should start out with something on, on a good note, and we hear all the time about Olive Garden. And just to tell a little story about Olive Garden, I know we're at the Seton School with my good friend Henry Young doing a junior achievement activity, and there's a map laid out on the floor, and um, there's and it's all mapped zoned um, districts within the city zoning districts. And the three third graders had done little buildings, and they, they were to go and push the buildings in the district where they thought it should go, and the lesson was um, let, le learn where stuff should be and how to map and plan out a city. 
And at the end of the presentation, this little boy in the back who, you know, the Johnny in the back of the room who never really said much, raises his hand and the teacher says, if there's anything else anybody would like to tell you, ask Mr. Pelashek before he leaves, please let us know. And the little kid in the back of the room raises his hand and says, when are we getting an olive garden? At third grade. <laughs> so we know that you guys are a, a famous, you like Olive Garden. We thought Olive Garden would be a great place in the historic armory. Well, moving on to some more um, up-to-date stuff that's more realistic. Today's agenda is really to talk about a uh, number of in, uh, in initiatives that we've undertaken. New housing developments in the Art Square project, uh, the Levitt and Sheboygan concert series, um, some new businesses coming to the downtown in particular in 2016, um, some other citywide development, the trolley system, a downtown business uh, retail recruitment strategy that's just been developed. Um, and then at that point, I'll turn it over to Dave, and he'll finish up the presentation with some stuff specific to Sheboygan Square in light, enlivening urban spaces and downtown storefront beautification. So starting out, we, you've heard a lot about this initiative to get more housing in the downtown. Um, so we are uh, happy to say we've got a development agreement, we've got a developer on board, we've got approved plans for the former Boston store property. So over here is the library, and over here on the right side of the picture is the art center. This development will sit in the middle of the Boston store property. Um, the building, as you can see, is laid out on this north end of the property. Um, this is 81 market rate unit uh, apartments. Uh, with 4,054 square feet of uh, retail space on A Street, underground parking, uh, one car per unit, um, 10.3 million uh, project costs set to begin in June, be constructed in, be completed in May of 2017. This is a combination of one and two bedroom apartments with all the with the amenities. I guess I, I'm not real familiar on this, but I guess people like you can have your dogs in here and you can have a dog wash in the basement and you can have bike storage in the basement and all of that kind of modern stuff with fitness centers. There's also a community room overlooking what we're calling the art green or the art square at this stage. So this is a development plan. You may have seen this in the paper. This is uh, proposed the kind of the layout and the area in the middle here is the community room. Um, and that's, that's primarily going to be geared towards garage doors that will open and close to allow people that would rent that that are staying in this building to kind of participate in what's happening on what we're calling the art space or the art green, which is the rest of the parcel. Um, and this is just an overall drawing of that. So what this is going to look like is there's going to be some segregation of parking on the north side for some additional parking for surface for those units so that lot behind the Black Pig will be modified down and there'll be the city will be making some improvements to this and continuing to operate this parking lot and they'll be paying a parking lease for these lots. This will be their primarily their front door. So this circle here is their main entrance and drop off. This ramp is how you will get to the downstairs um, for the underground parking. The retail is over here on 8th Street, and then you can kind of see the layout um, uh, as a, one of the interesting things is it, it spans between 7th and 8th Street. So all the buildings, if you were to look on an aerial map, you know, you've got all these buildings on 8th Street and you've got all these parking lots on the other on the east, east side of it and you have all parking. So they're going to kind of change that a little bit and shake this up, which we're excited about. So this is an artist rendering of what that will look like from A Street. This is the retail down here. Um, this will be the public green space. So in the master plan that the Sheboygan Square in the city did, one of the big things that came out of it was this connectivity between the library and the art center. So you're going to see this uh, development plan shortly of what's kind of being planned and how this space will be utilized, but it's really about kind of incorporating this development, this housing development into this green space and this art and culture area. So this is, you, most of you in the audience may have participated in Levin Amp Concert Series. Um, it's, you know, it was the first year, it was a great success. It's coming back this year. This was the start uh, last year at the Art Center. And then sometime, sorry it's a little dark, but sometime in the middle of the year we moved over to the Boston store. So the concerts are going to continue this year and I'm hearing a lot of comments like how are you going to do that with construction? Well, the stage is going to move for a third time and hopefully it'll get to its final location soon. Um, it's going to move to the corner of New York and 7th Street and be opened up to, like, to the north uh, west. 
Uh, the construction will be going on on the north side of the property. The concerts will be going on the south side of the property. The contractors already told us they're willing to stop early on Thursday nights to allow this to happen. So I think it should be a great family festival area with a lot of activity going on. What's going to happen after that is um, once the concerts are, only, are running between June, uh, middle of June and middle of August this year, and the reason is is because in September the city will be coming in to do some public improvements of this property. So what you see here is the rest of the space. Um, this is the site plan for that, and this is that development on the north side. So the library is still on your left, and uh, art center is on the right. This is New York, the new New York Avenue on the south. Um, this is going to be basically treated almost like an amphitheater in a way. It's not going to have a lot of grade, but there'll be these main walkways that will come through because what we're trying to get is the people from the library over to the front center of the front door of the art center. And, you know, people's travel plans, if we didn't put a sidewalk like this, they would just walk across here anyway. So we thought, well, let's encourage them to do that. So we've got a kind of a pathway, but these inner uh, immediate lines in here are actually raised walls that uh, will come out of the ground and if you didn't come to the concert or to the venue for uh, with a, a, a chair you could sit on a little ledge and then, and then people could sit if you had a chair you could sit in this green safe space in it but it's like a little raised wall ledge um, the other idea is that this underneath here um, as you can see in this image the the stage that community art project collaboration project, the mic stage will be incorporated into a larger stage and there'll be some type of venue uh, covering over the top of it and this uh, depiction is we're leaning towards the pathway of a uh, kind of like a sailed st structure to tie into our waterfront. Um, this will be colored concrete down the middle here. This whatever happened to my pointer, okay, here. Um, and then the, you can see there's about 400 people sitting, 400 people are in here in this rendering. Um, so there's plenty of space to do this. And this is really original, our original plan was to have another building on this corner. Um, and after we sat down and looked and understood where this final housing development was gonna be, uh, there wasn't a lot of space left. So we've made the decision, you know what, let's just energize that space with uh, public green space. So we, we, this is really integral to what's happening in that housing development and Oak Brook, the developer, has been really keen on making sure that this happens um, for their residents because that's kind of, this whole thing is playing together. What's nice about this, we were just talking about this this morning, is this last row along here has a, a higher raised wall and it's going to act almost as a natural uh, fencing to keep people from just walking into the public, the private area of the development. There's a, a wall that's about 36 to 48 inches back here, and people could sit on there during concert <coughs> venues, but they could, it also kind of creates a dividing line between these two. So we are hoping that this project will start construction in September. Um, and then during the concert series this year, the Art Center is going to do a crowdsourcing to name the space, so that's why I don't know what this is called. We call it the Art Square for now, but um, depending on what the public ultimately agrees to and what gets voted on under crowdsourcing and um, agreed upon, and we'll name the space, and then it'll be part of this overall plan. So as I said, the concert series will continue on Thursday nights through this summer. Um, the space after that will be utilized for other cultural and civic events. Um, this arts and culture district that was one of the key pieces of the plan, the Harbor Center plan, was to develop this arts and culture venue in the downtown. We really see this space as, you know, enlightening and bringing additional artists and additional uh, venues and performances and stuff to it year-round. Um, even in the winter, there's some thoughts of maybe some ice skating and that kind of stuff if we can do it. Um, so we'll see where that goes. We haven't done a lot of PR on that because we want we don't want to build a schedule and then tell somebody, oh, you can't do it because we're going to do construction. So we're going to wait till next year and try to roll out um, more inf information on this. So if you're involved with a civic organization out there that might have an interest in this space, um, they can contact our office and we will help you through that process. I've heard a lot about, well, why are we doing this here when we have Fountain Park down the other way? Fountain Park is a great park. I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but there's a lot of venues that go on there anyway. The uh, Farmer's Market, 
um, Lobster Boil, Art, Earth Fest, you know, just to name a few of these events that will happen. Those will continue to happen there, and these two will kind of coincide together. We see this as the new and upcoming millennial space and young professional space. So in 2017, 2018, our friends and us at the John Michael Kohler Art Center are going to roll out a um, public art project yet to be dis uh, developed, but it's something around playable, uh, playable art structures and sculptures and that kind of stuff in this green space um, to really kind of leverage this area. So we really look as planners and our friends at the Sheboygan Squared as this is being the arts hub of our, er of our downtown and everything kind of growing out from that area. I think there's enough to do at Fountain Park. It's just that Fountain Park, in my mind, is a couple blocks off of where the key is and you know where the in, where the interest is and I think with housing and bringing in you know potentially another 160 or so people living in this area this is a great venue so I think both of these can coincide together um, Sheboygan Pops concerts and all of those other venues can continue to still happen at uh, Fountain Park and this space can be energized as well so we also have another development down on South A Street that is across from the chamber. That's, um, it was originally started out as a SMET project. SMET is now backed away from it, and it's a group out of Milwaukee called LCM Funds that's looking to build 91 market rate apartments there with rooftop decks and penthouse suites. Uh, one to three bedrooms, a project of about 15 million. Uh, they're having underground parking as well. is in a fitness room, media room, and other amenities. Uh, you may have seen this in the newspaper. This is the artist rendering. It's mod been modified a little bit. Um, they're planning to break ground in June or July. Um, they should be coming through the Planning Commission in the next couple of weeks uh, to get approval on all of this. But this is another venue of trying to fill in those downtown housing uh, needs that we've been hearing about. So the uh, Sheboygan County Economic Development Study said that there was a need for 300 new uh, apartments. Uh, in the downtown. Um, we're getting close to that with these two developments. We'll be at about 172. We're in a final negotiations to develop. This is South Pier, so Blue Harbor is over here. The river is here. All the parcels outlined in orange is another development that we should be coming out with soon. I can't give you a lot of information because we're not at the end yet, but um, we're, we're looking at energizing this these middle spaces where they've historically been green grasses in here, green grass in here, um, and doing some additional development here that will augment what we have going on in the other parts of the downtown. So stay tuned to that. Um, we also have our friends uh, Stephen Reed Schmidt, as you saw in the newspaper today. They uh, purchased the former Sheboygan Senior Community Center, and they're under construction on dorm-style housing in that uh, facility. Uh, first phase is coming up here real quick to be done on May 15th of 149 beds and phase two, 115 beds sometime in September. Um, so this is the building. This is another venue to add some additional housing and we're excited about the tenantry and that's, that's proposed for this development as well. Um, we have a approval of plans for a uh, I'm sorry, the title is a little bit off on this, but anyway, the, this is a new shanty in the downtown, so on the former Mucky Duck property on the riverfront, um, Parker Johns will be opening up a barbecue and pizza joint. Um, these are the drawings of what that shanty is going to look like. There's going to be a two-floor dining facility with second floor, and then they're going to be opening up um, these doors to the patio overlooking the lake, the river and the lake. Um, this project is planning to break ground in June. We have two new businesses opening in downtown that have recently been approved. The Art and Soul is the former June's property. Um, it's, it's been bought by a local investment group, and they're in the process of renovating it as we speak into a design and consignment shop for local artists to display and sell their artwork. They'll also be providing a place for a classroom space. So this is this project, as well as the board and brush, which was approved on Tuesday night at the Planning Commission, is going into the former Bing Lit. Blingalicious property, which is um, south of the old Wisconsin Bank and Trust, um, kind of across from Econo Lodge. It's a retail art studio with instructional woodworking workshops. They serve malt beverages and they do classes. Uh, and then the last 
business, as you know, is um, Sprecher's, the former Highland House, um, is being converted and opening in May. So this is an artist, this is an architect rendering of what June's is going to look like. So they're going to be combining those two spaces and they're going to keep some of the old June's feel to that. Um, but they're going to be turning it in really into an art studio that I think is a, de a need in this community of, of allowing spaces for artists to be able to sell their works and not have to have their own storefront. This is the uh, board and brush. Um, Julie is the owner. She owns seven or eight of these locations across the state. She just opened in Illinois and in Texas. So this is this Pinterest thing that my wife always tells me about, um, where you go in and do your do signs that, and like she said at Planning Commission, that you really want to hang on the wall and you just don't put it in the closet. Um, that you do stuff that on weathered boards and stuff like that that shows that is your name and different signs and stuff and you print it and you do the woodworking and all that stuff right in the store while you get to drink a malted beverage as part of it and they do classes and all this good stuff. So Julie is a entrepreneur, the owner. She found us. She came in. She's really excited about what's happening in the downtown. She's really excited about the uh, arts and culture and all of that kind of stuff. So I think it'll be a great addition. She's hoping to be open by the beginning of June. And this is one of those things that I have to point out that hasn't been in the newspaper yet, so you haven't read about it. <laughs> Moving on to other citywide developments. Um, this was in the newspaper last week. Uh, there's, we've got a development agreement into the council. This is Taylor Drive, I-43. Uh, up, up on the north here would be the Holiday Inn Express, Walmart, and then the start of our business center here, railroad tracks that go out to the power plant. Um, there's a Fairfield Inn and Suites proposed here of about 120 to 160 rooms. It's yet to be determined what they're going to build, but they're planning on building about a $5.5 million hotel on this property. The, the plan was to build a second hotel, um, a courtyard. These are both Marriott products, as we don't have Marriott products in our market. Um, there's some wetland issues they're dealing with on this side, and if they can overcome those in 2018, 2019, they break ground on the second hotel. But either this fall or early spring, they'll be breaking ground for sure on this first uh, Fairfield Inn and Suites. Um, the development agreement is that the city has to extend some sanitary sewer and do some median cuts on Taylor Drive to make that deal happen, but I, it, it sounds pretty good. And, Thank you. Here's a kudos to Mayor Vanderstein. Thank you for him and his uh, wife because they made the contacts of this developer at a local establishment when they were having dinner one time. <laughs> hey, we do business recruitment, whatever we have to. This is the, um, uh, the title's off again off the chart, but anyway, the downtown trolley service. So we, we talked a lot about connecting the downtown and how to do that and we've heard that we should build a bridge we should build a bridge we should build a bridge well it's five million dollars to build a bridge and there's a lot of str issues with that so we thought well what can we do in the meantime so our uh, Derek Mink and I got together the transit director and said how can we um, you know try to accomplish this with little to no effort so we developed this uh, downtown trolley service that really runs between the downtown riverfront South Pier and the marina. Uh, provides service Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, since it's federally funded, there was this clause that they had a, you had to charge a minimal fee so you can ride all, that, all day for a dollar. Last year, the service saw about 1,600 participants, um, which was up from about 800 the year before. So it's building, which we're excited about. Um, the hope is that after we, after a few years of doing this, we can hopefully get to Sunday service. That's a little bit more challenging in the fact that uh, of union issues and some of that stuff, but I think there's a way of working through that because it would be ideal to have this thing run on Sundays right now. It only runs um, six days a week, and Sundays would be another day to capture a lot of our guests that are in the market. Um, we started out with a wrapped bus. And you may see this one driving around. This was really geared towards Sheboygan Square. And kind of what we have here in making memories in the square was the tagline on this bus, which has free Wi-Fi and visitor guides and all that good stuff on the inside of it. Um, we're in discussions with the city of Green Bay to hopefully purchase the old Tidal Town trolleys. 
and these are sitting in a garage up in Green Bay and they serviced the uh, stadium and so they moved a lot of people around and they bought some new ones and they said they would be willing to sell three of these, two working and one not working to the city for a nominal fee. And what we would like to do is get these on the road and get these to become the trolley so we can start branding around that and actually have trolley stop signs, trolley stops and trolley, you know, different areas. They have wood seats in them and they're kind of great for kids and all of that stuff. So we're hoping that by middle of summer, if the Federal Transportation Administration decides to work with us, um, that we can get these buses here and on the route and use those as a dedicated trolley in the downtown to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more, you know, commemorative towards this trolley idea. We, we've heard a lot about um, retail. We need more retail. We need more retail. We need more retail. The problem we had with before that is anybody that's in the retail recruitment market knows that a retailer um, typically takes an, a point on a map and says, okay, if I go there and I draw a circle around it, uh, how many households in, in disposable income can I draw into that area? Unfortunately, downtown Sheboygan, you know, doesn't get anything from Lake Michigan, although Lake Michigan is a great asset for tourism marketing, it's not that great of an asset for economic development recruitment, because um, there's no incomes coming from that direction. So we think that by building this housing and changing our downtown and bringing in, you know, new incomes and, and new people that this, the time is right for retail. So we partnered with the Sheboygan Square Business Improvement District and came up with a five-step plan as to how we're going to accomplish this. So we have uh, an intern from Lakeland College who is finishing a database on a Google platform um, of all the buildings in the entire district, including Michigan and Indiana, as well as A Street. Um, the Central Commercial with square footages, owners, rent price, pictures, contact information, who's in there now, what's upstairs, is there vacancies, a huge database of all these properties because one of the things we've struggled with over the years is we get people that call up looking for space and we don't have it at our fingertips to give them locations to go to. So we've developed this uh, database which you'll see um, being rolled out real soon. Um, finishing up in the next couple of weeks and be available on all the different websites as a place for people to go to look for uh, rental information. We've developed tw a list of about 25 to 30 retailers that we think we should target. Now, um, you know, there is, we're really being cognizant of the fact of the retailers we have. So we had a meeting yesterday and Jane Davis Wood from Relish says it's pretty, it's pretty fun to be able to pick our neighbors. So we, we're picking businesses that augment what we have and don't compete against it. And what the plan is is to finish developing a retail recruitment brochure, which is a 12-page document of why you would want to open your business in downtown Sheboygan. And then we're hiring a semi-retired retailer to go out and do a grassroots effort to recruit businesses. So um, she, this, this lady's been in retail for 30 years. Her husband is a retired banker, and they're going to go out and talk to businesses of different communities and different places that we've talked to um, and see if they would be interested in opening up a second or third location in our market, um, giving them this downtown uh, retail recruitment brochure, and then guiding them towards where to find space and how to work through the process to make it as easy as possible. So um, we're hoping to uh, get about, or, you know, this doesn't happen overnight. I, I had a laugh last week. I did a presentation to um, the St. Dominic's, they called them the coffee clutch ladies. There was 80 uh, ladies in that group. And they're like, well, how many are you going to get in one year? Because you have to get at least, you know, 10 or 15. Well, you know, retail recruitment, if anybody's in that area, it doesn't happen overnight. So if we're successful in one, two, three new businesses, um, you know, over the course of the, you know, couple of years, we're doing very well. Um, one of the challenges I think we're going to have is you hear a lot about, um, we have a lot of vacancies downtown. Really, there aren't a lot of vacancies downtown. We've got a lot of professional services and other type of non-retailers on the first floor, which when a group of us took a uh, ride, uh, went over to Holland, Michigan last year and toured Muskegon, Holland, and 
Grand Haven, one of the things we noticed is that their downtowns were thriving with the fact that they had only retailers on their first floor. They had no service or no professional office or anything like that. So that's really where we need to get to. We need to educate our business uh, building owners, our investors, our developers, everybody downtown that we need retailers on the first floor and we need those offices on the second floor so we don't have a retailer here and another one six blocks over. We've got, you know, 15 retailers all in a row where somebody could just walk and go to multiple different shops. So that's a part of this whole recruitment strategy is to start educating our um, our owners of business buildings downtown and try to encourage them to not just fill it with anybody but you know work with us because we're hoping to get some success out of retailers somebody said to me the other day why don't you guys just hire an outside you know firm to do a national firm to do this well the problem is is the fact that we're not going to get national retailers in downtown Sheboygan it's just the, there's just not enough traffic to do that so I get a kick out of when we post something new and there's the comments on the Sheboygan press website and they say you know why are not we getting an old Navy downtown or why are not we getting an you know a high end business we're not going to see those businesses downtown we need boutique style businesses so the only way to get to the boutique style business is not through a national recruiter but through a grassroots efforts and that's really what we feel is the best route um, we have successfully started out in step five with uh, what we call the last few years a developer summit um, this originally started out as an activity of tourism we invited all of the local realtors on a two-day experience of our market and explain what was going on our quality of life aspects of the downtown um, what all that what we had we had about 25 or so if I recall 90% um, of the people on the bus were all locals 90% of the retailers had said they weren't even at half of the places we went to and we only went to like Book Horton Gardens and the Art Center and those places so that led us to believe hmm we've educated our local people now we should invite some people from the outside so we partnered with Sheboygan Square the city and the Sheboygan County Chamber and the EDC and did a, a developer summit and the first two years we invited in developers and brokers from the outside and they could stay overnight at Blue Harbor we had rented a trolley we took them around to all these different assets um, showed them our opportunities in our market and I really believe that that's why we're where we are today in the new development is because Oak Brook the developer at Boston store was on that uh, trolley was on that ride um, the developer on South A Street was on that area some of these smaller ones have been on that in that uh, participated so they they were exposed to what our market is and they you know there a lot of times there's this negative perception if you turn on you know the radio station in Appleton or the radio station in Milwaukee and you hear all this negative stuff all the time about Sheboygan when we finally brought these people here and brought these developers and brokers out of uh, Milwaukee and, and Appleton and Green Bay and showed them what we have they were like wow we never knew you guys had this kind of stuff and they were more interested in developing here so this year we've decided to change that a little bit and we're going to do a retailer summit so we're hoping that the the people that we start contacting up here um, we've got some key businesses that we're going to be going after that will really fit in well um, we're hoping that on a, by doing this on a Monday we can encourage those uh, same people to come here and experience what we have and maybe you know seal the deal a little bit better and give them that flavor of what's going on in this market so um, this is kind of infinite stages of a retailers uh, downtown retail strategy but I think it's very doable I think we've got the right people at the table and I think we can see some successes in the next few years this is uh, the cover of the retail recruitment brochure it's it's in final stages to be printed but it's really about telling our story that we're a growing emerging creating market um, you know we I don't know the last time I asked somebody this the other day when was the last time you saw 30 million dollars of new investment in downtown Sheboygan in one year it's been a long time so this is really a changing the market and this new housing is going to change the market and we need to be prepared for that you know we hear about a downtown grocery store all the time when are you going to get a downtown grocery store I think we we can go out there now and try to market for a downtown grocery store with the fact of having people to live downtown the problem with a mark downtown grocery store and I've talked to a couple um, larger grocery store people is the fact that um, you know they they again look at the incomes 
and you know they say well our prices aren't going to be as cheap as the big box stores because we just don't won't be buying in that quantity and knowing some of the Sheboyganites and it's no you know um, it's nothing bad to say but you know they go for the cheapest bargain so they would drive across town to say five cents versus going to um, this downtown grocery store so it's really about trying to find a mix of market that would work for this area that would be both cost effective and, and you know cost functional for the, the developer broker of that or um, and, the, and, the, and the city as a whole so uh, we're, we're working on that we're well aware of that we understand that we've done a market study to see what the incomes are they didn't support them uh, three or four years ago um, we're hoping to get that market study updated and maybe go out and talk to some other um, venues to see if we can get that filled. I know we've got Good Side Grocery um, up the street that is helping a little bit, but I, you know, I think there's, an, there's enough to do a little bit more than that as well. So we'll, we'll maybe report back in next year's what's happening on where we are with the downtown grocery store. So at this stage, I'd like to turn it over to Dave. He's going to finish up kind of some specific projects that have been worked on in the downtown. And then after Dave is done, we would have, be happy to answer any further questions. Thank you, Chad. OK, um, we're running a little late on time, so I, I don't really want to get too far into what a business improvement district is. But please, anybody who here today that does not know what Sheboygan Squared is, please raise your hand. Everybody knows what it is? Great. Then we don't have to worry about that. Um, we, back in 13 is when we started to uh, get together a, a group of, let's just call it the executive committee. Uh, there was some money left over in reserves uh, to look at having a plan moving forward. In the history of the bid, uh, it was kind of, we did a lot of marketing, promotion, events, uh, co-op marketing, if you will, for the members of the bid. And uh, everybody would, would uh, get on board with that. And we, you know, we got a group of people together and say, well, we've got some money left over. Maybe we need something to help us uh, plot the future ahead. So in the beginning of 13, we got together and we chose a company called Veer Bicker out of Madison. And they came in and did our, our market survey and really looked in depth at our downtown, our riverfront, and our south pier and came up with the master plan. And that was uh, adopted in early 14, and we moved ahead with it. And this is the three, one, there are many main uh, topics that we wanted to cover, but these are the three major ones that came out of that uh, analysis. And of course, Chad talked a lot about the, uh, the housing development, the need for 300 additional housing units, and we're getting pretty close to that. Uh, we needed to connect the three areas. The bid is very, we have one of the largest bids in the state as far as uh, you know, square mileage, and it's not really connected well, as Chad mentioned, we don't have a bridge. Uh, so South Beer is a bit dis disconnected from Riverfront and downtown. So we really needed to stress connecting the three together and making, making people understand that it's all kind of, uh, kind of a part of a whole. And, and of course, at that point, we were still called Harper Center. Um, the other thing, they, they realized right off the bat that we've got a world-class art center. We've got a fantastic library. We got the state-of-the-art theater in the Weill Center, the John Michael Kohler Art Center, and Mead Public Library. And yet we had this huge building standing in the way of linking the three together, even though they're, they're actually less than a block apart. So they said, you know, we really got to look, we got to focus on how we can connect these and really play up the, uh, the arts and culture district. Uh, when I first got hired, the first conference I ever went to was put on by the uh, Wisconsin Downtown Action Council in Appleton, and that whole conference um, was about uh, utilizing and, and uh, maximizing your arts and culture district in your downtown. And, you know, I kind of filed that away and thought, well, I don't know if I'll ever get to use that, and a couple years later, here we are. So um, how are we going to accomplish what the master plan has, has directed us to do. Uh, the city then did adopt that in, in early 14. And um, we kind of uh, struggled a little bit with it in the beginning to switch over from the old bid, which was, as I mentioned, kind of uh, directed toward marketing and promotion. 
uh, and into just really getting into the master plan. So we, uh, we established four new committees. Actually, the Operations on Connectivity Committee was, was up and running in um, actually late 14, early 15. The other three are pretty much new as of this year. So that Operations and Connectivity Committee is really the nuts and bolts committee. The, these are the people that figure out how we're going to do stuff and, and what we're going to spend our money on. So they've been working already for over a year, so it makes sense that they actually are, are pushing the train right now. Our promotions and cross-marketing, that's, that's kind of what, what the uh, marketing turned into. Our executive committee is kind of the, the president, uh, the vice president, myself, the treasurer. Uh, who's kind of, and on chat, we're kind of uh, putting together, making sure the other committees are kind of on the, the track to keep moving forward. And the business development committee, this is where the retail strategy is coming from, and it's got a lot of bid members on it that know retail better than myself or some of the other members. So uh, between uh, the connectivity committee and the city development staff, we came up with a plan. One of, one of the things that the master plan showed us is that you want your downtown to be clean, you want it to be attractive, you want it to be walkable, and you want it to be safe. And these are things that we looked at our downtown and we really needed to work on it. And we looked at certain areas downtown and saw some opportunity to do something to make an impact, especially visually, uh, without spending too much money. And we, we focused in on, on five locations, and three of them we're going to be working on. You will actually see some, some development there this year. And the five that we focused on are the library plaza, the water feature, uh, the fountain, the alley between Black Pig and Ehrman's Jewelry, uh, the alley between U.S. Bank and Subway, and the alley between Mavericks and the former uh, Durkee's office. So those are the areas that we, we thought we could do a, a lot of upgrade for, for not a lot of money. And the first three we're actually going to really get into this year. Uh, here is the locations, and those three that I talked about, number one is the library plaza, number two is the water feature, number four is the alley um, near Black Pig, uh, some additional ones. Then uh, uh, that little alcove next to the Wild Center, that's number three, kind of a dead space in there. Uh, number five is actually the, this, whoops, let me go back here. Okay, num number five would be uh, the alley next to U.S. Bank. Uh, number six is actually the alley between Econo Lodge and GM's. Uh, number seven is the uh, empty space where Weavers used to be in between Mavericks and the Turkeys building, that one we've got on our list. And number eight is the alley that's right adjacent to um, uh, Stefano, Chatteria Stefano. So those we're going to be getting to in the future. But, um, okay, this is the, uh, the water fe feature as it exists today. As you can see, it's, uh, it's pleasant enough. It is kind of stark. There's a lot of straight angles. Um, of course, it was built before ADA, so there's really no, there's not a lot of handrails there. There's a lot of steps to get down there. Uh, it, when it was first built, uh, was considered kind of dangerous. There, swimming is not actually allowed in there, and unfortunately, kids still go in there. Um, anyway, it's not all that inviting, and quite frankly, it, it's underutilized. So we thought, what could we do to get this to be more of a focal point? Ch Chad and I uh, attended a conference, um, and they said people are always attracted to water. They want to be near the water. And yet, why doesn't this work? So we're going to make an attempt to make it work and make it much more inviting. Of course, you're going to see a lot of this downtown, and, and this is going to make a big visual impact, a lot of flowers. We're going to be putting in flowers along the, uh, the, the vertical structures there, hopefully even some more on the, uh, uh, on the wall uh, next to Wisconsin Avenue. We're going to be putting in some picnic tables. These are kind of those composite kind of plastic picnic tables. They'll be actually permanent uh, with umbrellas. And hopefully we can get more people uh, with, with the project going on across the street. Uh, there may be a restaurant in there. They can take their food over and enjoy the water. Uh, one of the other things we're doing is, um, as you know, we had the, uh, the light show, the Christmas light show there this last year. And it really went over quite well. 
Uh, it's not really the time of year to be sitting out at the water feature, but we did have music. We tried to play the music along with, with the uh, moving lights. So we decided, well, this would be a great opportunity to have music there all year round. So we're going to be putting up some more powerful wireless speakers up there. And we're going to be cranking up, quite frankly, a little bit of classical music there. So you'll be hearing that as you're walking downtown. And perhaps it'll make some of the, this has become a, quite frankly, become a hangout spot and for some of the kids in town. And quite frankly, the, uh, sometimes their language isn't too good and some people are intimidated by that. So we thought, by playing the type of music that they may want to move somewhere else. Uh, opera, I'm thinking opera. Also, the, the water feature really, you know, the, this thing on the corner right here, this, oops. I'm sorry. Okay. That's how it looks right now on the corner of Wisconsin and 8th. So when you pull up to the corner, even if you're standing there, you really can't see the water feature. Uh, there's some birch trees there and, and some of the shrubs that are, are um, they're, uh, perennials, they're, they're too big. You can't see through them. It's actually not uh, very safe there to turn. So what we thought we would do is pull those out and put in, uh, once again, perennials, but a little bit lower, some very nice flowering bushes so you've got a better view of the water feature. I mean, that's where we spend the millions of dollars. Let's at least have a look at it. Um, the Library Plaza concrete jungle. I mean, it's just completely concrete. And uh, there's, there's a new event that goes on there called Chalk It Up. It's the chalk art uh, show where we get kids in and we get uh, actual artists and do uh, chalk art. And uh, I, I'm a judge for that. And it is just excruciatingly warm and bright. It's very, very bright when the sun is, is out full blast. So what we thought we would do is, is to soften that up again, once again, more flowers, and we're going to put some turf in there. I don't think we're going to actually take the concrete out, right, Chad? We're just going to put the turf over the top. Astroturf over the top. Astroturf, yes. Uh, some more, as you can see, some more uh, planters. The city has already purchased some planters. We're going to have quite a bit of flowers there, and we're going to purchase some of the, um, the games that are popular now, like ladder toss, um, bean bag, uh, bocce ball, no beer pump, not, not this time. Um, th this is an example of the alley. This is the alley between Black Pig and Ehrman's Jewelers. And it's never going to be a place where people are going to comfortably sit down because this is like our little Chicago here. This is a wind tunnel. And I mean, it really gets windy in there. And it doesn't even have to be that windy in general. But when it goes down uh, between these two big buildings, it, is, it gets kind of crazy. But we thought we could make it a lot more attractive just by putting in some more flowers. So I think we've got a lot of hospices in here. Um, and our signage, our branding signage for Sheboygan Square. And then for not a lot of money, we're making that a lot more attractive. Also, we are putting some benches in there. Um, more toward the A Street side. Uh, this is the other alley we spoke of between uh, Subway and the bank. Uh, once again, the art part of that, we're hoping that uh, the art center or artists in general, we can commission them or, or get some, uh, some art to be painted on these walls because some of these older brick buildings are really, really dark and that one is in particular. But uh, as you can see, once again, the flowers are really gonna make things a little more attractive. Okay, one of the things that we started with the water feature with the Christmas lights is using lighting as art. And with the cost of LEDs and, you know, the cost to buy them coming way down, and of course energy consumption is, is just really, really like less than one third of the cost of incandescence. And you can do so much with LED lighting. Uh, any LED light, typically you, you've got a whole range of colors that you can use with that. So what we, we're going to do, probably not this year yet, but next year, is you'll see some of the alleys, and in particular, uh, these here, which I call the used car lot lights, um, strung in between the buildings. Uh, we can hook those up to the existing lighting and just brighten up those, those alleyways. And then sometime in the future, we hope to get more of an uh, artist design. And we have a uh, local guy, Mark Mann, that's uh, doing that. So. Uh, this one down here is kind of interesting. This is the uh, projection type lighting. So you can project uh, images up on the sides of the building and uh, talk to uh, 
the guys over at George Michaels, they got that huge wall and uh, we can put the projector on the account of So look for something to happen there. Uh, more public art for these spaces. This is great here. These are, uh, yeah, pool noodles. Not too expensive, but it looks kind of cool. Huh? I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, and we've got so many creative here, people here in Sheboygan. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to these spaces really looking a lot different. I think you'll see a lot of change in the downtown. And it's going to, you know, the bottom line is it's going to get more people downtown. Um, also, as I mentioned before, we have some issues with shade in some parts of, uh, of the bid. Um, so we're looking at different types of shade structures. You saw the one that there probably will be over the stage at the, the new art square. This is an example of, of some other things you can do. So it makes the shade part even part of the art. Um, so we're looking at those too in the future. And last but not least, this is the thing I've been working on uh, quite a bit for the last couple months. Uh, we're going to be, the Schmeichel Square is going to be purchasing uh, pots, actual flower pots, for any and all of the businesses in the bid that are interested in having them. And uh, they're, they're pretty good size. These are large pots. And uh, we're going to have them planted with flowers. Uh, all, all they have to do is agree to water them and deadhead them and take care of them for the summer. So we plan to have those out in front of the stores uh, by end of May, beginning of June. So you're going to see a big impact throughout, especially the downtown, because that's where the most impact will be, the riverfront and South Pier. Kind of have a lot of uh, plants already, but you'll be seeing this uh, starting in June. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And Dave Gass and I are going to be up on a truck hauling <laughs> all the flowers out through the downtown. It should be a blast. Also, we're going to continue with, some of you noticed we had baskets. Uh, in the middle of the block and then of course we have the large cement pots on the corners and with the help of the uh, town and country garden club they help us every year with with that so that is it time for questions call chad back up we'll let her rip mark Hello. mark in the um art square area there's the one building on the south west corner of that space. I don't remember the exterior, the back, and the side of that building being aesthetically pleasing. What's going to happen with that? They're working on a facade renovation for that after the Boston store was taken down, um, exposed that side, particularly that north elevation. Yeah. So. Um, they're, they're in plans to do something and they're going to have to cover it over with something and then um, the thought was is the art center may do some type of art, you know, public art project on that venue as part of this once this construction is done. Oh, you mean on the Songlight like folks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's in the works. Thank you. Yeah, that Any? would be another one that if we could even get it flat we could do some of that projection stuff on, yeah. on there. That would be kind of yeah. interesting. Yes? When is the Olive Garden opening? <laughs> Soon. Talk to the mayor after the meeting. Yes, let us know uh, about your running. Uh, you showed a lot of funky type art, maybe being like mural type things. And I just caution you, because those things look so dated. I don't know if there had been any thought to like a wall dog type project that they did in Plymouth. Um, they'll start out being dated, but they're classy, they look nice. We, we've talked a lot about that, and we don't want to be, I mean, Plymouth has had, they have it. We don't want to be like Plymouth, and the art center, this movement at the art center, this different type of involving the community and connecting the community to that, is really the role that we, I think, we're probably going to continue to go. Um, this is kind of plays into that whole Sheboygan project that they did a few years ago on a lot of public buildings. Um, so I think the what we want to do is we want to create a space which we've heard from people that have traveled here. Wow, that I would have never expected to see that here in Sheboygan. We want it to be kind of that eye opener thing. You know, we could just paint the history of our community on the side of the buildings, but we felt we didn't want to take away from Plymouth, and we wanted something different. Okay. Yeah. Yes. As a retailer in the downtown area, one of the difficulties that we have is our customers are limited to two hour parking. What are we going to do about meters? Because that is a huge 
um, barrier to getting people to come shop downtown? Meters are not going away because if meters go away, then the businesses are going to pay a huge parking assessment. So right now, the meters, realistically, the public probably doesn't know that. They collect about $180,000 a year towards the upkeep of the downtown. And a lot of what's happening downtown, um, particularly keeping weeds down, you know, planters, snow plowing, all of that is being handled by the parking utility. And that is what's keeping the cost down from turning around and turning around and selling that to the, um, your business location is on Michigan, which is a little bit different, isn't it? My business isn't located anywhere on Michigan okay. Avenue. But thanks for saying that, Chad. Well, I, I don't know <laughs> where the, the two hour, you know, we, there, there's issues, there's, yeah. there's pros and cons to it. And we've vetted this uh, strongly. Dave had a committee on parking. And, you know, if we take out all the meters, I can tell you what's going to happen. All the, owner, all the business owners and their employees are going to park all day downtown and you're going to have more of a problem. No, no, At no. least now you get turnover. My issue is the time. The two hours? Yeah. How many people? I know you're not a woman, but we go shopping for a little bit longer than two hours. If we start at one end of the 8th Street, park our car, and we're shopping and we're going down, two hours is used up really fast. Now we have to go walk all the way back down. I'm, I'm going to leave. It's an issue. And maybe some of them can, maybe we can look at some of those. I mean, in the lot behind the Black Pig, there's going to be eight hour parking back there. So you can pay and park in those off street lots. Um, and the, the idea is to get the turnover. Because we hear that in a lot of places, two hours is too long and we want 15 minutes. And we get requests all the time from businesses for 15 minute parking. So it's, it's, it's not an easy, it, you can't please every. You can't please everybody with it. It's not an easy. Just pull out all the meters or keep all the meters. And the, we we deal with this every day. Poor Dave is hears it every day, and we try to accommodate. It's all the cult there. We try to accommodate most of the businesses, but it's a challenge. I, I I'll get that. I get that. Instead of taking them out or putting them in or whatever, what about? having them available for cars and we're working like we're looking at so we there's a there's an app where you can pay and go on your phone and pay right from it to the meter and we've looked at that yeah. we don't the city we're, we have to get our behind the scenes technology up to snuff to be able to do that which we're, our IT department is working aggressively on so hopefully soon we can implement it's some more, of that yeah, it's more about that and Millennials yeah. don't carry change they carry we understand cars. that we understand that the mayor always says, if you don't have parking meters, put them in. If you got them, take them off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, do you have a, a top five list of uh, the type of boutique stores you're trying to bring into downtown that you could share? I don't know that we want to share it right now, but we do have a mix of men's, women's, children's clothing and shoes. Um, and you know just some other things that we think are lacking but at this stage I don't think we uh, are ready to share that information my daughter was in the, she, she went to stuff for retail management and so I called her up and she didn't know she know, knows more big box but she did give us a few leads of some interesting stuff what I can mention we haven't really reached out to them yet but it's called primp are you aware of that one they're, they're located in small towns that are near metropolitan areas, or they're, they're, um, they're not really a mall store, but they're the kind uh, that would fit very well, and it's really kind of the trendy. So that's the kind that we're, that's what we're looking for, and we've got some in close markets nearby that, um, you know, we think would benefit from opening up a second or a third location. Yes? Um, with all the beautification on 8th Street, um, how are you addressing a small number of businesses that are sort of attracting and maintaining an undesirable element um, that's hanging out around on 8th Street? And so Classical music. <laughs> Opera. Opera. Um, we, we understand that, and any community is obviously going to have 
some of those concerns. I'm hoping that, um, you know, we just can't tell somebody they can't open their business because there's going to be riffraff hanging at it. Uh, there's ways of dealing with it. Um, and I think by getting, I, I really believe by building more people and having more people on the streets and more, you know, just stuff going on that those people are not going to want to be in the limelight anymore and they're, it's going to push them to go other places. We, we had a problem a few years ago with some benches and some people hanging out on benches and, you know, those types of things and we've, you know, relocated the benches and, and, and did some different things. So as we see where these are, we'll try to address it to the best that we can. You know, we've, we've asked other communities how they have handled things like that, and, and it, it's kind of not a heavy hand. You know, what happened at the library is a lot of these guys were in the library, so Garrett Erickson over there hired some private security and got those people out of the library because people were intimidated. Unfortunately, now they hang outside the library. So, But people that are doing unsavory things want to be around other unsavory thing doer people. So if we get those people to go somewhere else, they will be filled in with, with people that we want. It's a slow process. I, I realize, Nathan, exactly what you're talking about, and, uh, it, but it's, it's still a free country, so we'll work on it.